Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we'll talk about something very important happening in East Asia. Japan is building its very first hypersonic missile system, it's called the Hyper Velocity Gliding Projectile, or HVGP Block 1. This weapon could completely change Japan's defense posture and even the balance of power in the region, so let's break it down step by step. For decades Japan followed a very strict self-defense policy after World War II. The constitution restricted its military, and Tokyo always avoided anything that looked offensive. But times have changed. With rising tensions from China in the East China Sea, North Korea's missile launches, and a growing arms race in the region, Japan realized that just being defensive is no longer enough. That's why they started the HVGP program, a homegrown hypersonic weapon that can act as a counter-strike capability. In simple words, it gives Japan the option not just to defend, but to hit back if needed. Now, let's understand what this missile actually is. HVGP is a ground-launched truck-mounted system. It uses a solid-fuel rocket booster to push a warhead high up into the atmosphere. After that, the warhead separates and starts gliding at hypersonic speeds, more than five times the speed of sound. Its range is estimated between 500 and 900 kilometers. That means Japan can strike enemy bases, ships, or military infrastructure without even leaving its own territory. It uses satellite navigation, inertial systems, and even infrared or radar imaging to hit both moving and fixed targets. And because it moves so fast and unpredictably, it's very difficult to intercept. The project started in 2018 under Japan's Defense Research Agency, with Mitsubishi Heavy Industries leading the work. Originally, Block 1 was planned for 2029, but due to regional threats, the timeline has been pushed forward to 2026. Low-rate production started in 2023, and test launches began in 2024. In fact, Japan tested the missile in the United States, at California's ranges, and again in 2025. These tests proved that the missile could separate, glide, and follow its program trajectory accurately. This shows that Japan's technology is catching up fast in an area where only the US, China, and Russia were leading before. Block 1 is just the beginning. Japan is already working on Block 2 versions that could extend the range much further, up to 2,000 kilometers by 2027, and even 3,000 kilometers by 2030. These versions will use more advanced glide designs, like wave riders, which can sustain even faster and longer hypersonic flight. This means Japan won't just defend its own islands, but will also have the reach to deter threats much deeper into the region. For example, in a crisis, Japan could target enemy naval fleets or missile bases before they strike. So, why is all of this significant? Because it marks a shift in Japan's identity. For decades, its military was described as a self-defense force. But with the HVGP, Japan is signaling a credible counter-strike posture. This isn't just about defense anymore, it's about deterrence. It also sends a strong message to neighbors like China and North Korea. Japan is prepared, and it has the ability to respond quickly with modern, hard-to-stop weapons. In other words, the HVGP is both a shield and a sword. Of course, Japan is not doing this alone. The United States is providing support, about $200 million worth of testing and cooperation. Both countries are also working on a glide phase interceptor, a missile designed to shoot down hypersonic weapons expected by the mid-2030s. So, Japan is not just building offensive weapons, but also defensive ones to deal with hypersonic threats from others. By 2026, the first HVGP battalions could be operational in strategic regions like Kyushu or Hokkaido, protecting Japan's islands and surrounding waters.
To summarize, Japan's HVGP Block 1 is a fast, precise, and powerful hypersonic glide projectile. It will enter service around 2026 with longer range versions coming by the end of the decade. It represents a major shift from a purely defensive military to one capable of credible counterstrikes. The big question now is, will this strengthen deterrence and keep the peace, or will it spark an even bigger arms race in Asia? Only time will tell. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to share your thoughts below.